Hey, I'm Richard Miller with Goldie May, and this is the live genealogy research series. Watch as James Tanner and I, along with invited guests, work through a genealogy problem with no script and no agenda. Maybe you'll learn from the big strategy, maybe you'll learn from the small features and the tools, or maybe you'll just see a better way to do it and you can leave a comment so we can all learn. I hope you find this really helpful. Now here is the research. Welcome to episode 18. I'll share my screen today and I'm thankful to have James here with me. I thought, James, that we could look at a case from my family. This is the Wilson line that went to Ontario, Canada. I had saved to Goldie May a project that I called Messy Source Linker. So it wasn't a great title, but it was just, I'd run across this before and wanted to do something about it. So I, I left it and I thought we could come back to it today. First, I want to just describe what's going on here and then just kind of go down the path of cleaning this up. And then I, I would love to just have your have you looking over my shoulder as it were to just see if we're talking about this right and, and taking the right steps here so james what i think i'm looking at here is that we have canada and ontario canada marriage record on the left with a john and maria wilson and uh, i think these are the parents of the the groom and then on the right we're seeing you know john gibson wilson from my family who's attached to that john part of the record and then uh, Martha, the wife in this family, is not attached. And there's this Maria Wilson who's already attached to someone else. So we, we kind of need to, dis you know, sometimes when you run across this, I think you, you end up discovering that the person attached, like this Mariah, is actually the same person as the, the person in the tree you're, you're considering to attach. And so you end up merging them. But I don't think that's the case here. And so I thought I would just look at that with you and see if, if you, you know, kind of where that goes for you. So I, I, I put the two of them into a project so I could graph them on the subway map. And what I'm seeing here is that, uh, let me move my zoom window here to the side. So the blue Martha Cummings is, is the one we're looking at here. Green is the person already attached. And as you look at the places they lived, they do have some overlap, right? So they, you know, this is an unknown place in Ontario, Canada. And one is born 11 years before the other. And then for the places that have a county, Halton County, you know, we've got some children born to Maria in Halton County. But then apparently she dies at age 48. And Martha, on the other hand, has records of living beyond that point. And we don't even have a death date for her. She is residing in Ontario, Canada still at age 60. So these look like two different people. Just thought I was... To yeah, yeah, first thing that comes yep. to mind, it might be a second wife. They might be both wives of the same okay. person. So let's. So maybe let's we want to switch that around and take a look at that. So, okay. Yeah. So I, I flipped it to John, and it looks like it did pick up the other wife, right? And the Martha that we were looking at is is available there, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that looks good. So, do we need to do anything else there? To well, we need to find out if that's correct or not so the detached one we can pull up the other uh, we need to pull up both the two wives mariah and uh okay let's one do that I'll pull up john and we'll go down and there's the two wives mariah and martha and we'd so like to just they look already at have two. them down as two wives so yeah okay okay so yeah they are both attached to john as wives so it looks like no do we have a marriage date yeah we do have 1880 for one 1848 for the other and and mariah dies in 1878 according to this record and the marriage occurs in 1880. yep uh, look at the later. ages look at the ages of the people uh the approximate we just look quickly at the time 41 to 41 to 80 she's in her 40s for martha yep. and he's in uh 60s uh, so he's marrying a, a younger wife the second time possibly Okay. The first one, they're they're very close. He, he was born in 1826. Mariah was born in 1830, so she's four years younger. So they get married in 48 when she's 18. Yeah, the, well, and I'm, I'm just cheating here with uh, Goldie May because Goldie May saying marriage was 1848, so that puts him at 18 and her at 22. Okay, so he was 18 married 22. a 22 yeah. year old. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, That's helpful. Good. Good. You can do the calculations for me. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's not, not me, but yeah. So, uh, okay. And they both have a marriage date. Do we want to look at 
and look at children's dates. Okay? Children's dates, okay. Because that's another way that these families can get confused. So they get married in 48. There's a 52, mm -hmm. 53, 60, and a 64. And back in that time period, you, you're automatically thinking there's got to be more children. Because there's those four, gaps. There's seven years between Sarah and William. Mm -hmm. And that kind of gap is not usual. Okay. Okay. Now good. let's see let's see what kind of sources we have that might help us here. Um there's the Canadian census in 1871 and 1881. So Mariah, John, Sarah, William, Albert. Yeah, so there is seven years between those children. That still raises okay. an issue, even because there that seven year period is shorter than the 10 year period between the census records. So the if they were born and died between that time period, then there would be Yeah, more. true. True. Yeah. So you whenever they have this, it it may not be obvious and it may be difficult, but the answer is yeah, there's always a question out there that there's somebody missing from this family. Okay. And Sarah and um child the twins. Yeah, many times family search will show an indication that says there could be another child. There's a child could be missing. Yeah, looks like possible missing Sarah, child. Right? See if yeah. that Okay. Okay. It, this is possible and, that this person, this couple, could have had children, but he was, he was in his, um, well, fifties, and she was in forty. Well, that's you know that's not an extreme difference. We find, you know, sixty-five-year-old men marrying uh, women in their eighteen, eighteen-year-old women, but. Oh, okay. That's not... okay, so we've got the four children and the source said, was that four or two? Yeah, four children. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, All right, that... so we feel good about the children there in the first mm -hmm. marriage. And... Now let's see. Now let's see what kind of sources perhaps we're, we're missing here. Let's look and another thing we'll do in just a second. Okay. Okay. So we've we've got census. Look down through here. Go back up to the you know, You've got marriage. Census. Okay. What I don't mm -hmm. see for for John Gibson Will, Wilson is I don't see a parent-child relationship record unless some of the says that it's on a marriage record or whether it's on a census record or an early census record, um, except he's born in 1826, and that's going to be before the census. So you're talking about his relationship to his parents? Yeah. 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 Because mm -hmm. we show his parents as listed. Mm -hmm. We show that he's son of Hugh Wilson. So let's look at Hugh Wilson to make sure that we have something showing that relationship the showing John Wil Wilson as a son of Hugh Wilson. And this, and spoiler, this is the kind of messy uh, kind of end the line situation that we've looked at before where we've got this ancestor who, you know, has children in very, you know, across the Atlantic, the U S mm -hmm. Canada. So uh, okay. this one is probably. Yeah. There's, there's a real be, question. Be messy. Yeah. Yeah, and the next one over is even more messy because That's it's right. not yeah, likely to have one. all those people. Yeah. So John's relation to Hugh is yeah, possibly suspect, but then and then but yeah. beyond that, certainly. Yeah. Well, okay, here's you know, there's no hard and fast rules because there may be some other additional reasons that we we wouldn't know see initially. You know, we wouldn't instantly see. But if we're seeing simply looking at something to start questioning whether the information is correct, the fact that we don't have a record that shows John Gibson Wilson as the child of Hugh Wilson. Even if it fits well into a time frame that you've that's been created on the in the children's list, 
with with birth dates we still have a question about whether or not that's valid whether that yeah. person is this right person okay and one thing that's other thing that i've noticed is that on hugh wilson it shows him born if i remember correctly born in new york yeah that is right new york is the birthplace and then he's the one that you know moves to canada as part of uh the, the sect of well here's the, here's the interesting well okay so if it were an earlier date 1798 his birth date in 1798 um basically there's two possibilities one is that um that date is a questionable date because if you think of 1776 and 1782 kind of the two big dates for the united states um, and also the war the revolutionary war uh, why were people moving to canada they were moving to canada because they were loyalists hmm. and if he's okay. if he was born in 1798 that means his parents could have easily been loyalists and moved to canada and if it's ontario that's even more of an <laughs> of an indication that they were loyalists because that's where they were going was directly okay. across into ontario so here's some good ideas so basically you could do a google search uh for for canadian for a loyalist records and put in the 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 uh surname will wilson with two l's And I had only associated that move to Canada with there being Quakers and that they were had some draw to other people there. But yeah, the loyal, loyalist angle on this is no loyalist too, because but, they 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 would they didn't want to live in the United States. No, right? Yeah, I, they, were they were they were Quakers too, and I I had only thought about the Quaker side. But I mean, maybe maybe there was correlation between being a Quaker and being a loyalist or something and I think what I think we did find some loyalist records when we were looking at at the father yeah I think we did yeah because there's you can see there's and it's Irish name uh-huh yeah and that's an, another thing we could check real quick is let's get in to find my past okay and general search just go to search I think you're signed in because it says welcome yeah, back. I think so. And then and put John in Wilson. Wilson. No, okay. not John. Just, just Wilson. And then we'll see how many there are. That's a that's that's kind of a low average. Four sixty for, a, yeah. for a surname. Okay. But go back now and change that to where down below it says world. Change it to uh, Ireland. Nineteen thousand. There is a significant number of people in Ireland with that surname. Okay. And then try England. See see how it differs from England. Hmm. See, there's a lot more in England with that surname yeah. than there are in Ireland. But hmm. it's it's still an Irish name that could be people were in Irish. They might be all Northern Ireland people, however, and actually be English and not Irish. Ah, uh, the head comic from not, England, yeah. Okay. It may not be an Irish surname. It may be an English surname with people living who have lived in Ireland for a long time. Okay. So those are, those are the kinds of real uh, parameters that you want to look at. But now there's another parameter here, and that is when you're looking at a family like this, let me just let me just kind of indicate what I would be doing here. What I would be doing here is I would be looking at this family for the purposes of seeing because they're like in 1826, which is a good good date. I would be trying to see whether or not there were people had done any work enough work with this family to do their descendants. So we oh, like we did at, last week. You want to? Yeah, yeah. Always do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is. It, it, it may sound repetitious, but on the other hand, it's different for every single family and, and how you do it. So if you look up at view either Here. tree yeah. and go to descendancy. Okay. And then uh, let's so yeah, take get, or get rid of the portraits. Go to descent where it says descendancy up oh, down below and unclick portraits. There we go. Okay. And go four. 
Mm -hmm. See what happens. No, see now. Yeah, not much, huh? Yeah, you're, we're talking like zero works. Been, research yeah, has been done about this family. Line. Yeah, so, so there's some opportunity there. Yeah, there's some arrows, still some down arrows you might want to click. Um, oh, yeah. But even then, I mean, you've got one that goes, to, yeah, there's only one line right. or one or, yeah, out of all those, there's only one line that has actually been brought forward. Okay. And that one would be one you'd want to check pretty carefully. The rest of it's had no work done to speak of at all. Yeah. So there's plenty of work to do there. Well, there's questions yeah. that are always raised. And I have people that, you know, it's not like every day I wish it were, but um, people who come and say, well, I, I, I just don't know what to do. I mean, it looks to me like there's just no, no work I can do. And I go, my tree's well, done. Kind of yeah, have you got, idea. Have you, yeah. Have you got five minutes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. Or maybe 10 and I can show you a whole line that needs to be done. And yeah. this is, this is exactly what you look at. And why is this the case? Well, because regardless of what you're, of what you're saying here, you have marriages with no children. You have people yeah. who apparently, not too many, but there's a couple up here that have a birthday but no death date. So they could have lived long enough to to have gotten married. Yeah. And and then, but the main thing on this one is that there's a lot of couples here who they have wives and husbands and and but they either they don't have wives and husbands, there's or husbands then they're that's the first question. Mm -hmm. But if someone like down below, William Cecil Balmer, who was born in 1896 and died in 1966, and it shows no marriage, then you know, you're yeah. pretty well. Something even like though that. that's into that, because now that you're there, click on him and let's see where he was living, what it says he was, where he was. So he's saying he was born in Oklahoma. And so you've got some real interesting things to try to try and figure out yeah there are Here's, some interesting things there people born like oklahoma kansas arkansas then married in ontario canada and then living in california yeah so that's kind of makes yeah. me go hmm mm. yeah it makes me yeah. go mm, too there's yeah. lots of hmms <laughs> out there <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so James, this, like, this reminds me of just kind of, this is a random thought, but have you ever used this feature that says no children? So you're, you're saying I've done enough research that I really don't think this person had any children. I don't ever mark it because I'm you never sure. For sh the only time okay. I'm sure is when I, I see a, a, a series of, of records uh, like census records, for example, a series of census records where each person will be in the census record each couple you know the couple will show up in each census record and they never and they're old and they don't have any kids and then they end up living with uh, a young somebody else another relative that's not a child okay so they have like some that. indication that they probably didn't yeah. have children okay yeah and if the right. wife if the husband dies or the wife dies and the wife or the husband does not end up living with a child end up with living with somebody who doesn't seem to be related then that's a pretty good idea that there's no family, okay. but it's never, never yeah, it just came to mind. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, the All reason right. they well, didn't, the reason they didn't have any children going on is because their children died mm -hmm. between the census records. Yeah, that's right. So then I mean, you wouldn't want to make if, that. If they lived over, for example, if they lived over in 1918 with the, the flu, flu epidemic, the whole six kids could have died in the family. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you just you know, don't make assumptions and, and sometimes the conclusions can be misleading because it gets you thinking, well, this is all done. I don't need to do any more of this. Okay, good. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe we do we leave it there today then? And we've taken well, let's do one more thing before okay. we move on, because this is something that I've been emphasizing in the last yeah. 40 years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> his books so let's go okay. up and just just choose a tab doesn't matter which tab and uh do a google search for wilson genealogy and then you might want to put in like 
Canada or something, anything that just kind of ties it into a, to a family. Okay. And then just go down and see if there's a book listed that shows up. David Wilson's kind of the famous founder of the Quaker offshoot. Mm -hmm. And what else? Try the book. next page because they don't yeah, okay. put in book. That'll help too. Here we go. That's Wilson Thompson. Hmm. I might keep it on double L Wilson. Let's see that. Uh, yeah. Here's library. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. Let's see. Irish John Wilson, United Empire, Loyalist Family Fonds. John Wilson first came to Upper Canada along with his friend Nathaniel Petit in Pettit. the late Petit in the late 1700s. They both moved from New Jersey. They'd been imprisoned, imprisoned for not siding with the rebels and maintaining loyalist allegiances. Okay. So yeah, my wife has Pettit family. Example. Oh, okay. And I know it's Petit, but I probably maybe one T would have been Petit, and I said it wrong or something. No, no, it's, let's see. Yeah, but it's one way or the other. But it's. Uh, and they do come from Long Island and New York, by the way. Okay. All right. So maybe there's some connection in this. Okay. That's something to look at. And yeah, anything else in there? I mean, does it work? Maybe it's worth doing, you know, take a look at archive.org too. Yeah. Yeah. That's Let's always some cool. Books. Let's see it. Oop. Down, Down at the bottom there. where it oh, says thank search. Thank Put you. Click the books there. All oh, right. That's what I want. And then click text instead of metadata. Try that. There's some, there's genealogical mm. helper article on somebody named Wilson with two L's. Oh yeah, James Wilson. Okay. Let that open in a tab. There's, there's a diction, bibliographic, uh, biographic of some oh, yeah. Wilsons in Canada. Right. So these, there's, there's more resources here that, that yeah. could be readily available. And I think that's about enough, actually. Okay. Good. All right. Well, thank you, James, for coming on. I take a okay. look at this. Well, thank you. All right. Talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye.